Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Fintech Show. In this week's episode, we have our head in the clouds, investigating how cloud-based architecture is taking the industry by storm, despite some of the traditional banks being hesitant to adopt the platforms. We speak with Citi and Starling Bank to find out more about their migration to the cloud, what it offers them in terms of agility and security. We also speak with IBOS over in Boston to find out more about how they've helped institutions move seamlessly and in a secure fashion. So why aren't all clouds created equal? I guess it depends on how you think about what cloud technology is there for. So I, for a lot of us as, um, as consumers, we have our social media and our personal photographs um, up in the cloud space. But as you move into more professional environments, cloud is a way of developing a more cost-effective way of managing capacity and bandwidth. So as our data requirements grow, as our customers' uh, payments business uh, grows with us, um, the amount of processing, the amount of information that we need to store grows exponentially as well. And cloud is just a very convenient way for us to, to accommodate that growing bandwidth requirement. But we wouldn't want that information and that, that, that sort of very sensitive data in such a public space. So the idea of a private cloud is something that we, um, uh, that, that, that we, we, have, to, we have to look at as well, not only from a, a security perspective, but possibly from a regulatory perspective as well, when it comes to how we apply regulations around data protection. Cloud security is fairly new, so it's been around for roughly five to ten years. The original cloud designs were what we call Cloud 1.0, and it was designed on it was designed around a monolithic architecture, uh, where everything flows through a central cloud. The newer clouds are what we call Cloud 2.0, are based on containerized architectures, and that containerized architecture allows the security to reside across multiple different clouds, so a micro cloud technology approach. The result is that you can apply security policies to the applications you're leveraging in the cloud in a more granular fashion. So move your security policies that were once on appliances to the cloud without having to sacrifice how you apply security. Can we talk a little bit about cloud? Because uh, that seems to be that all of starting infrastructure is built around this. Well, we have embraced cloud technologies since day one. Um, uh, when we started Starling, people said, the regulator will never allow you to run a, a real bank on the cloud. And over a period of time with education, with discussion, now um, lots of banks are deciding that cloud offers um, the security and the resilience um, like no other infrastructure. Uh, we are using multiple cloud technologies and companies to deliver the service to our customers. And the great thing is it is infinitely scalable. Uh, and we're very, very excited about that. So what's making some banks so hesitant to adopt cloud-based technology? What are some of the drawbacks that come from moving to the cloud, especially when it comes to security? And why have some of the larger institutions been scared of that? It really does improve security because the, the fact is the clouds that your data is residing in are being managed by, by these third-party um, uh, vendors, uh, so the clouds are secure. The issue is that your data is being accessed by users, your employees, from anywhere. So where these employees are, who has access to them, what they're accessing. Uh, you run into issues with data loss, but you also run into other issues like data, just compliance. Can they access that data? Uh, things like GDPR become complicated. It's now becoming a business driver. Um, you have to move and create more efficiencies because your competition is doing that. So you're ultimately gonna move there. The question is, if you don't do it um, securely and in a planned, uh, pla planned fashion, uh, you end up creating what is called the shadow IT where people start using their own cloud. You know, if I want to send a file to somebody, I'll use my own personal Dropbox because I don't really want a VPN into the corporate office. And that shadow IT, even if you're, you believe you're not using the cloud, your employees may be, and that's a scary thought. Now, for a large institution like Citi, there are obviously a lot of benefits to moving to cloud, but that journey must have had some challenges, some sacrifices. Uh, can you tell me about that? Well, certainly from a challenge perspective, I mean, Citi, um, we're a large global bank. We're present in 140 countries. We provide payment services and collection services and liquidity management services, as well as trade services to 84% of the Fortune 500, around 700 public sector entities around the world. 
1,200 corporate shared service centres. So the way we've done that, and speaking about something that I particularly manage, um, is, is through online banking applications and host-to-host -host connectivities. If I take our online banking application, City Direct BE, as an example, that has uh, payment capabilities across 135 currencies, 27 languages, and over the time, over the years, we've built that up into quite a large application with more and more functionality that our customers have been demanding. Moving that into the cloud has meant for us quite a large challenge in re-architecting that application into what we call microservices. Because those microservices are ultimately what will enable us to utilize the cloud technology to its fullest in that we can um, expand those services and build up the capacity of those services in a much more agile way. This move towards being much more open and much more agile in, the, in our delivery of banking services is where the cloud-based technologies and application programming interfaces or APIs are going to really help us. The data shows about 70% have yet to move their security off appliances to the cloud. So why is that? And really, it comes back to the question as to how do I get to the cloud? Where is that cloud? And how do I ensure that that cloud is meeting appliance and my data is secure in even a vendor's third party cloud? So that created a lot of hesitation, especially on the highly regulated organizations. Now with the newer clouds, the more the containerized ar architectures like iBoss, as well as you know, the ability of cohabitating in, across multiple different clouds, it's allowing them to migrate to the cloud in, with, in a way that matches their vision of, of how they want to leverage the cloud, including uh, if that cloud has to reside inside of their private cloud. Appliances cannot scale at the, the same pace a cloud can. And as bandwidth goes up, and as we adopt more uh, uh, applications that are in the cloud, and things like Office 365, they start crushing the appliance's ability to perform and keep up with the environment. You know, you could continue to add more and more appliances, but it's never going to scale. So it's forcing you to either, uh, it's forcing a lot of users to move to the cloud because it's the only way you really can keep up with the demands of the bandwidth and also the increase of the number of devices accessing the internet. Next, we took a look at how the banks are already benefiting from cloud-based technology and why iBoss's solutions will be increasingly high demand going into the future. Well, I think right from the beginning, we wanted to be in the cloud. Um, we have no servers or anything in this office at all. Um, so that's our complete philosophy in terms of how we build our technology. That gives us a huge amount of um, benefits to the business. Um, I think it changes some of the risks. Um, I don't think it eradicates every risk uh, out there. Um, and, and a lot of people say it solves all the risks around data centers, well, no, it moves to a different set of risks. And clearly when we uh, started um, the bank four years ago, we spent quite a lot of time with the FCA and the PRA, really to make sure that they were comfortable with um, the approach, what we're doing. We also spent a lot of time with the payment schemes uh, to ensure that they understood uh, that process. And, and, you know, an example, when you go through the uh, accreditation process with some of the payment schemes, they say, so where's your data center? And you go, don't know it's within Amazon uh, you know can we can we go and see it no you can't you know where's where's the servers don't know um, and so I think what's happened is the uh, the regulators the payment schemes etc have started to understand there's a diff different set of questions and different ways of evaluating uh, where they were traditionally asking us the old data center questions um, and that kind of uh, not worried them, but just was an unusual set of questions for them to ask. In an increasingly regulated environment and industry, how are Citibank using cloud-based technology to ultimately improve their interactions with those regulations? Well, here in Europe, I mean, we've had a couple of really big pieces of regulation impacting us as a, as, as a banking payments industry. Firstly, uh, one that has some opportunity around it is, is PSD2, the Payment Services Directive. And um, this time round, PSD2 has opened up the doors to open banking within Europe. And what that means in practice is that um, our customers' ability to access their accounts is now opened up not just, obviously, through banking applications that we as banks provide, but those accounts now uh, can be accessed from other platforms, other applications, other software operating over the internet. And so in order for us to meet 
the, um, uh, the, the, the requirements of PSD2, but also to embrace some of the opportunities of PSD2 and open banking. Uh, we need to start moving our applications and our, our capabilities into a cloud-based environment and to have those exposed to the world through APIs, application programming interfaces. The, the, the other regulation where cloud technology is going to have an impact for us um, is GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. And particularly because when we think about data protection as a requirement, um, one of the things that uh, we have to think about also is the geographic location of where our data actually is. With the cloud uh, based technologies, uh, the question is actually posed, where exactly is the data? And, and yes, obviously the data will be residing on physical servers in some kind of physical location, but virtually because it's being accessed from all around the world, uh, what does it actually mean for data to be in the cloud when it comes to uh, national regulations that are concerned about the data being ring-fenced within their geographic borders? With a lot of these large institutions, they operate globally. A lot of their employees work remotely. One issue we see with a lot of remote workers is you know, the speed that they can access some of these applications or you know, get to some of their work because of the bandwidth problems. Um, can you tell me a bit more about your solutions and how you solve those? Yeah, because it's in the cloud, it allows a more uh, direct access to the applications are accessing in the cloud. So they're not having to open a VPN and go back to the corporate office to then go out to you know, SharePoint or the 365. That backhauling the data to the corporate office creates latency, it creates localization issues with things like Office 365. By providing them a direct access to their applications direct to cloud, it really just resolves a lot of the issues with latency, a lot of issues with um, just breaking thing, how applications work in the cloud and, and ensuring that uh, at the end of the day, the productivity is retained for the employee. When it comes to the agile challenger banks that are potentially already on the cloud, what can iBoss do for them? Well, what's, what we're seeing is a lot of the more small agile organizations uh, as they move data into the cloud, and they've already moved their applications to the cloud, they're moving most of their, their uh, security in the cloud. Uh, what you really want to do is ensure that they can apply the same security policies that they retained when they had their on-premise equipment. So things like IP uh, restrictions in the cloud, uh, ensuring that only the uh, a authorized user can access uh, cloud data, that's the, the application of the cloud, when they're on, for example, their own, uh, the corporate owned device versus a personal device, uh, to ensure that, one, they're meeting compliance, but two, that they're not, uh, you know, accessing your data with an infected personal device, right? So those, they seem like small nuances, but it actually makes it a lot easier to apply security when you can actually apply all the, you know, this, the same security postures that you had with your on-premise equipment when you move to the cloud. What are some of the really exciting technologies and possibilities we're going to start seeing come about from using the cloud in the future? I think for City and our customers, um, what the cloud is starting to really help us achieve is to open up our transactional capabilities through application programming interfaces, not just for our customers to make use of themselves, but increasingly as they move into cloud-based applications with their software and vendor requirements, uh, for example, the traditional ERP vendors like SAP and Oracle are creating their applications in the cloud, uh, as well as some of the treasury management systems that have grown up in the fintech space, you know, companies like Kyriba, Bellin, FIS. These systems that our customers are using are increasingly being able to access our banking as a service type capabilities through the application programming interfaces or APIs that we are exposing. Where do you see cloud technology going in the future? And are some of these incredible kind of stories going to finally become use cases? Yeah, so uh, you know, cloud security is, is the, it's the future. There's really you know, the, the old brick and mortar, four walls, putting appliances inside your organization to protect user data doesn't even make sense. The data is no longer there, so there's really nothing to protect. Users are everywhere. They're accessing your, your data from clouds that are across you know, multiple different clouds. So protecting the users accessing data in third-party clouds is the reality that we live in. And what we're going to see in, is an evolution around cloud security that becomes more granular. It provides more control, more visibility, and ensures that the security policies that are specific to each organization can be, can be applied in a very more seamless fashion. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Fintech Show, and make sure to catch us next week. See you then.